Hey everybody, welcome to the Edify Podcast. Um, good to be with you again. Sorry we missed you last week. It was um, kind of a calamity of uh, illness and, as I said in my video earlier, and logistics getting together. But everybody's back on top of everything, I think. It's great to be back together. We, Of course, they had a, an opportunity to get together and do a little bit of something right before Thanksgiving. Um, but... Uh, we're back together, and uh, we're excited to be with you now in December. It is, as they say, the giving season. So um, we all year have really wanted you know, to have this mentality of, of, of giving to you each week with this podcast and doing the best we can to encourage everyone and edify everyone as we kind of march hand in hand towards heaven. And um, so we're going to focus today on on that very theme of what we call the gift. And so, uh, again, I think I'm just giddy because I'm excited to be back doing this. Uh, so, Terry, why don't you tell us a little more about what we're going to talk about? Yeah, since it is the giving season, what we want to do is something special for all those out there who've been a support to us and an encouragement to us. And we know you're praying for us, and uh, we certainly are thankful for that. Um, what we want to do, what George and Justin and myself have thought about is we want to give away some things. And there's going to be a little contest with this this month, if you will. Um, what we're going to do is each week we're going to have a $25 gift card to Walmart. And listen, I know not everybody's favorite is probably Walmart, but at the same time, it, it's a place that you can get a lot of things and maybe help out with Christmas a little bit. We're going to give a $25 a week away. But here's the deal. You have to share the Edified Podcast. So what we'll do is one of those, we'll cut it off at midnight, one of those that shares it today through midnight, you'll go in a hat, we'll draw, and then we'll give away the $25 gift card. Just a little token of our appreciation to you, yep. thanking you for being such loyal to uh, audiences and, and encouragers to us. We, you have edified us through all of this, but but. That is something special, but, but what's really special is what God's done for us. God has certainly given us the greatest gift of all, and that being Jesus Christ. Isn't that right, JB? That's exactly right. Most important gift ever, you, both of you have mentioned, it, is the giving season. Um, George, I know you mentioned this earlier, so why don't we just dive into it. Um, as we think about this time of the year, everybody's, a lot of people's minds are on Christmas. A yep. lot of people have already done a lot of their Christmas shopping. Uh, some have yet to do any Christmas <laughs> shopping. Uh, I've done some. But our minds are on gifts. And, you know, as a child, that's the most important thing about this season is Christmas Day is coming and, and we're getting a gift. Um, so why don't we share, maybe, and I'll let you guys go because I still want to think about it. And I've been thinking about this for a couple of days, but what's the greatest gift that you've ever received? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> First of all, I'll say... Uh, Maybe not the greatest, um, but this is a gift. Chances are you guys probably never got, okay? December 1979. I was two. <laughs> I was negative eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. December 1979, Christmas Day. Um, it was kind of a financially a tough year for us as a family. And I remember there was, for each of us boys, there was two or three little small gifts underneath the uh, tree. And I remember one of them was this strange triangle box that I could never figure out what it was. And um, it was a, a blow dryer, by the way. I had hair back in 1979. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but, but, but that wasn't the strangest. I mean, that wasn't the best, obviously. So, um, it lived in Michigan at the time. We had a basement in our duplex. Uh, we had just moved from Ohio. Dad was preaching in Michigan. And I went down to the little den down in the basement, and there was set up for me a brand new stereo with record player. Boom, baby. And on top of it was a uh, Moody Blues Elvis record, and the record was blue itself. Wow. 1979. Amazing. I remember that too because it wasn't long after that that we watched the Winter Olympics, my dad and I together, and that's when uh, the USA had done their great yeah. miracle, the miracle comeback. Miracle you know, on ice. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, that was a, that was one of the most uh, memorable mm -hmm. Christmas gifts for me. Well, I have two that I'll talk about. One doesn't deal with me at all, but um, it was I don't know, probably around 1985 or something like that. 
Uh, G.I. Joes were really popular, not the big tall ones. That was more, I guess, 70s and 60s. But in the 80s, the little three and a half or three inch or whatever they are figures were really popular. And uh, G.I. Joe was on TV and it was uh, something that I was, my cousin and I, we really liked, we collected them. And I didn't receive who was at the time the most sought after G.I. Joe to find. And I was bummed out about that, you know. But but later on in life, in, in talking to my parents, it touched me how much they tried. There was no eBay back then. There was no online stuff, of course. You just had to go to TGNY or wow. wherever else you could find it. And they searched and they searched and they went to every store they could. And they couldn't find it. But it touched me the older I got hearing that story, how much they they loved me enough to look and look and look. And they were very disappointed they couldn't, but it was still a great Christmas and all. But uh, my cousin did get it, so I, I was a little bit bitter about that. <laughs> but anyhow, the point is that that was one that's very memorable because of the sacrifice and, and the challenge my children, I mean, my, my parents had with that. But uh, you mentioned, you know, being a difficult year. Michelle, her family moved here from Forkett Island, Louisiana, when she was 12 years old. And when they moved here, uh, my father-in-law... You know, it was hard. You had to move. You had a lot of expenses. They put their kids in private school, which was something they weren't planning on. And it was a really hard Christmas for them. And uh, they got just a couple presents. But one of those is she received a Bible, her first Bible. And, you know, I, I know that, that that seems like to a lot of kids today, if that's all they receive. But that was one of the most special Christmases. Yeah. Michelle's told me about that numerous times. And she still has that Bible. And it's a very special Bible, but but the bottom line is, you know, there are a lot of great memories, but but sometimes I think we lose sight of what we get. Now that's a really cool story, and I'm sure Justin will have one as well. But sometimes the things you may not be able to afford, or the stories of what you didn't get, and the sacrifices and all, those are what really mean a lot to me at at my age now. Uh, the first one I, I'll mention was uh, when I was two years old. So this would have been like the Christmas of you 1989. That? No, I have, I have no memory of Man. it other than a home video Page about it. So it so it triggers the memory. Um, I don't remember this, of course, but I've seen my myself on video doing it. And my parents got me one of those little tykes basketball goals. You know, the one that's orange and red and blue and white. Everybody knows. Everybody gets yep. them still, right? That's one yeah. thing that's never changed. It's still the exact same basketball goal, I believe. Um, <clears throat> but there is a video of me. Um, again, I didn't remember getting the gift that Christmas, and it was in our first house that we lived in until I was almost three years old. And there's video. My dad just left the camera setting up, and I got the basketball, and I shot, and I shot time after time after time. It's just kind of interesting to go back and watch that video and to see how that was something that was Did so you shoot better at two years old or yeah much better yeah. It was, the goal was a little lower too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was just something that um i guess kind of helped shape my life because you know i'm still involved in basketball and still still my favorite sport um but another one is my parents gave me my first gun my first rifle you know back in uh i believe it was 97 something like that 94 97 um when my dad gave me my first rifle and Again, something that's meant a lot to me. A long time my dad's actually hunting in the woods this weekend, and he's in an area where it's snowing, and we're in an area where it's flooding. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, things like that. Um, the first rifle, my wife gave me my first bow. Uh, th those two things that ha I've spent a lot of time in the woods with. Uh, and not only are those just one memory of one Christmas, but they helped create a lot of memories to come with mm -hmm. spending time with family and friends in the outdoors. And anybody who listens to this knows that we like the outdoors a lot. And uh, that's something that, that's really meant, meant a lot to me over the years. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I think probably the... I and rap. Um, one year I was in, when I was in the military, a very long time ago, um, I was stationed in Okinawa, Japan, and I was by myself, you know, and being that far away from home, no family, you had a lot of tradition, you know, had a lot of family, like all of you guys, a lot of family traditions during the holidays, and to be by yourself in that scenario is, 
it's, it's pretty lonely, you know. It's 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 interesting. The, the you know the base commanders they try to do a lot and serve you good food and all that, but it's not like Mama's food, right? There's right. just no way. Um, back then, by the way, um, if you called long distance to home, it was three dollars per minute. And my parents dedicated and paid <laughs> for an hour. Wow. Back mm. then to talk to me, you know, just just so that I would have that connection on that day, and, and I never forget that. You know, that's. You know, that's a long, long time. That's in the mid-80s, and we're talking in the early 80s, and we're talking about almost $200 they spent, you know. And I think that was probably one of the most special gifts. And, and you know, I think the point, though, that, that we lead towards is the fact that, you know, we we all have cool gifts that we've received. We have gifts that we could laugh about and maybe wish we'd never gotten, or if we were telling the truth, we re-gifted them at some point. You know, we got all of those connections. But I think we start when we start leaning towards the the gifts that that mean something to us and and touch us in some way, then it really leans more towards what we're really trying to talk about today. Yeah, and you know, thinking about receiving gifts, it, it's one thing to receive a gift, but it's also being able to give. And you know, I'm surrounded by two guys that are really givers, and and they're sacrificial in their giving. Um, in fact when it's cold in our house, I still warm by a cover that, whoops, that George and Samantha made. And um, that's pretty special to us. And it's a really cool cover because they're full length. You, you know, you don't have anything sticking out, toes or anything. Justin has given me, uh, you know, a, a cup. It was my favorite cup. And then I went off and left it somewhere and, and lost it. But anyhow, you know, you think about, I, I think about those things. And, you know, every time I I warm, I, I think that, or when I would drink out of the cup, I think that when I drink out of my other cup, I think, man, I sure wish I had the cup that Justin gave me. But anyhow, the point is, you know, when, when we think about what others have done for us, mm -hmm. that to me, you know, I think about presents my kids have made for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a fundraiser at school where sometimes they go and they can spend in this little Christmas shop and you give them like, I don't know, five or 10 bucks. And, and Madeline bought me a pin one year, her, her first year, and it said, I love you, Mom, on it. <laughs> but, but but she didn't know that. And she still asked me, and I keep it in my coat. I keep beating this microphone, too. But I keep it in my coat pocket, and she asked me about it the other day, Dad, do you still have that pin? And, and I said, yes, and, and I haven't showed it to her yet because I don't want her to be devastated. But but I, I appreciate that, you know, and I think about those gifts and, and all, and and it's just special, but but we know who's the greatest giver of yeah. all, and that's our God. John 3.16 reminds us of that. It's such a special verse. For God so loved the world that he gave. God being the giver that he is is certainly something that, that we need to strive to be like. And so, uh, Justin, I'll tag you in on this, but, but, but just kind of maybe talk about... You know, let's lead into God the gift and and God the giver. You said you said this so many times, so I'm going to steal it from you. Uh, but I think it's good to say here that the greatest giver gave the greatest gift to the greatest the greatest number of right. people, mm -hmm. right? And and in that verse, you see that that uh, God loved us so much that He gave, and that that's so cool. And we have to have the mindset to to thank God for this indescribable gift, the one that we can't. We can't really fathom that he would let his kids like that. That to me, that is the greatest <clears throat> gift uh, for me personally is to be a father. Right, right. It's really cool to see our kids grow up, and y'all's kids are older than mine. But um, but that was kind of when thinking about the giving season and and this being we're talking about the gift today was the gift of children is something that's that never uh, never stops giving is to, to watch them grow up, to watch them uh, mature. You know, I want to share uh, something, if I can get my phone to pull up, because I had to take a picture of it because I knew I wouldn't remember, is um, talking about the gift. Here is a out of a, a book that Max Lucado wrote. It says, Christianity in its present form is nothing more than seeing Jesus. Christian service in its purest form is nothing more than imitating him who we see. 
to see his majesty and to imitate him, that is the sum of Christianity. That is something that, you know, we, we can't all give all of our friends a gift this Christmas season. We don't have the money to do that. But as a Christian, we can give our service to other people. Yeah. And that's exactly what Jesus came to do, right? He, he didn't come to, to be served. He came to serve other people. And, you know, and I'm glad you brought up this thing for you about being a father because I think... For me, the greatest way to put into perspective the gift is to somehow relate it or compare it to the things that seem to mean the most to us in this life. You're talking about children. For me, it it, it is now gone to being a grandfather. And I, you know, I talk about this a lot, but it seems like, and, and I don't know, you know, circumstances of life or whatever, but I have been so completely focused on the gratitude for my grandchildren over the past, I don't know, it seems like a few months now, um, that it's hard to talk about them without being emotional. And, you know, the, the greater love that I didn't know existed within myself that has been manifest in my love for my grandsons, to me, then I grow, I grow to have a greater appreciation about the gift of Christ because if I come, if I, I know what I feel for my grandsons, for Charlie and Owen, I know that there's absolutely nothing I wouldn't do for them, and and I think about them every day, and and I'm and, and when I'm not with them, I want to be with them. Well, when I put that into perspective, and I realize how much more that my my desire for a relationship with Christ has to be, then that, first of all, it makes me more thankful, and and second of all, it challenges me. Right to have a deeper appreciation, approach, and relationship, and desire, you know, for having that relationship with God because of the magnitude of Christ's sacrifice. Yeah, um, thinking about children is it, certainly special, and this time of year is is very special. My children, um, just to give a, a shout out to Marcy and me um, by something that my wife purchased somewhere along the way at Marcy and me, we have a countdown where you can ride on it in our kitchen. And so they ask every day, they're so excited to get up, can I change the date? Can I change the number of days till Christmas? And uh, so they do. They, you know, Madeline will get a, a little step ladder out so she can get up there and ride it or I'll hold her or something and Bo will do it as well. But, but they're very excited about it. But for me, you know, I, I think about what God has given me. And and he's given me, like you're talking about with your grandchildren and, and your children, he's given me my children. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I've i shared on here before, we had a long struggle. It, it it took a long time. But when I held Bo for the first time in my life, I, I just, my affirmation of faith, it was such a reaffirmation mm -hmm. of faith to know that my God, who loves me so much, has given me this great gift. Great point. He, he's given me this son. And I remember our pediatrician who at that time, they would come to the the hospital. Now the nurses take care of a lot of that. But um, he, he looked at me and obviously he saw something on my face. He said, and people say there is no God. And I will never forget that. It was just a reminder to me of how good our God is. And you know, I, I get to the point now that when people ask me, what do you want? I don't really want anything. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, maybe here and there I need a pair of shorts or a t-shirt or a church, uh, shirt to wear to church or whatever. But I get to that was like, save your money. You know, I, I have all I need right here. We've got, we've got kids. I've got a great wife. I've got, my family, both of them are in town. My parents are still living. You know, obviously we've lost, <coughs> excuse me, lost family members over the years. But, man, I have all I need. Knowing that God sent Jesus to die for me, there, there is nothing else, right? And God knows that he's going to provide for all of my necessities in life. Yeah, and, you know, I think more and more about that very point. You know, Sam and I have, we kind of have the mentality is that, you know, our Christmas to each other is 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not any large things, although my wife is very supportive of my electronics and <laughs> digital habits. And so she's very supportive in that and helps me along the way and encourages me and I appreciate her for that. But it's really no big things. It's it's a million little things that that are exactly what I need. And and really, as you say, 
all I need. I put my children on notice that their children are where our focus is going to be this holiday season. And they're fine with that because they really don't need anything. They, they desire my love. They desire my prayers and they desire my guidance. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the best thing that I can give them anyway. When we, when we start focusing on, uh, not ourselves, right on everybody else, then, then there are opportunities even outside of our own families where we can do the greatest things that we can do. And that is to give of ourselves to other people in service of other people. That's, you know, if you, if you're talking about modeling after Christ, mm -hmm. he said he, he didn't come to be served, mm -hmm. right? He came to serve. And so we have the opportunity during this giving season, so to speak, to show the love of Christ to people, our family, our friends, our forever family, people that we work with, um, to give in such a way to show people who we are, whose we are, and that we appreciate the gift of Christ. When the wise men visited Jesus, you know, it was amazing to me that they brought gifts. Hmm. Uh, when you think of those gifts, you think of the meaning behind them. Obviously, gold is something that they could always use, mm -hmm. you know, as far as uh, having a, a new child, a, a family, it, gold was something very valuable, still is. Uh, they brought the frankincense, the incense to, to help with, with whether it be sacrifice or, or whatever it may be. And then, of course, they brought myrrh, which was a, a painkiller. And certainly there was going to be aches and pains uh, that associated with that. But you think about the journey they made to be able to find the Savior, God's greatest gift now, to find that. And they celebrated by worshiping and bringing gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, what are we giving to God? God has given Jesus Christ to us. He's given us breath. He's given us a free country. He's given us, those who are in America especially, he's given us all, I mean, you talk about not needing anything. I definitely don't need anything. You know, um, it, it's, you know, certainly something that we look back and we think about how God has richly blessed us last month and then here we are this month. But but the bottom line is we, we need to examine that and ask ourselves, what are we bringing? What kind of thought-provoking gratitude are we bringing to God? Yeah. Because that's what it's about. Remember, Jesus said, now he's quoted saying it, but, but when Paul uh, pins, the, or when it's, when it's pinned, it's more blessed to give than to receive. That is the attitude Christ told us to have, and certainly we need to all have that attitude. I wrote a uh, bulletin article this week, and it was about a story of a lady who had decided for the Christmas season she was going to buy a gift for all of her friends. Well, through the busyness of the season, the um, kind of Christmas not snuck up on her, but got too close where she said, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'll just, I'll write them a card instead. So she found a pack of cards at a store, and she really liked the picture on the front, so she bought them, and she filled them out and, and wrote a little note in there and sent them on the way and then a few weeks later after New Year's she opened up one of the leftover cards and realized that on the inside she had missed this saying says this Christmas card is just to say a little gift is on its way and so you can imagine the panic now <laughs> thinking uh oh now I've told my friends I'm sending them a gift and and I'm not because I had not planned on it but it just kind of speaks to your point is we can we don't have to give actual gifts right. um, because of God because of uh, giving Jesus Christ, we can give Christianity to people. We can show the love of God to people. And that's really what's most important in this season is is for people to be able to see Christ living in us just by our actions, by our reactions, and not necessarily by the gifts we give, but maybe by the service and the love that we give to people. Yeah, and you know, there's a challenge that goes with that. You know, you think about it this way. If I had brought in gifts today for you guys, I didn't, sorry. <laughs> but if I had, and you it did. was wrapped all nice, because I, I do very good, um, you know, when I wrap presents. If I had given it to you mm -hmm. and you never opened it, mm -hmm. of what value is that gift to you? Really, it's a paperweight, right? It'd be a nice decoration for next week's podcast, but that would be it. The gift of Christ is the indescribable gift, right? But many people <clears throat> during this giving season 
They, they speak the name of Christ, maybe more than ever before. I'm glad about that. But many people don't open the gift. Right. The gift's been given to them, mm-hmm. and, and they don't understand what, what actually accepting that gift really means. You know, my encouragement for everyone today is to understand, to unwrap the gift, and to make it a part of your life. You know, accept it, obey it, and, and, and receive the full benefit of the most incredible gift that's ever been given. And, and, and I think our charge as Christians is to explain that, to, to show that to people, and, and to show what the benefit to our lives has been by the fact that we not only received the gift, but we opened it as well. Justin, I'm going to say this, and then you can probably bring us all to a close, um, but Jesus Christ said himself, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. That's what God did. Think about now, just the scene. See it in your head. He knew when Adam brought sin into the world that ultimately God, his son, would come. And when that came to be, now, according to to our time, God's eternal, but our time, there were thousands of years before he came. And he came, the Bible tells us, at just the right time. When you look at that, God doesn't do anything by accident. So he left heaven and came here so that we can have life and we can have it abundantly. God doesn't want his people to suffer, but he also expects us to give in return. That means we can't just take all of what God's done and not give back. We need to give back, certainly financially. We need to give back of our time. We need to give back of our talents. We, there's a lot of things we need to give back, but we need to accept the gift. We need to open the gift. We need to share the gift, yep. and then we need to give the gift. You know, Thanksgiving has almost become an overrun holiday with Christmas. People are we're putting Christmas lights up and Christmas trees up, and we're listening to Christmas music like Mix 99.9 earlier than ever before, right? Um, and Thanksgiving I, night. I try to boycott that stuff, right, yeah. as, early, as much as I can. Yeah, it's hard to have a Thanksgiving dinner with family now because – you've got to hit the malls by five or six o'clock because that's when stores are starting to open or you're getting up early on Black Friday to go get a gift for somebody that's you know a month away just so you can get a better deal on it. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 it says that for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. This holiday season make sure that we spend the effort and the time and the energy into giving Jesus Christ to people than we do uh, trying to give gifts, material gifts yeah. to people. <clears throat> Here on the Edified Podcast, we want you to know how, how free <laughs> the gift of Christ is, how accessible the gift of Christ is, and how easy it is to share with other people. Again, that's why we want to try to challenge you to to share our podcast. Not because we love to hear ourselves talk or think other people will, but we want to get the message of Christ out to other people. And that's that's the main goal here. Um, that That's the only reason that George, Terry, and myself do this. So please share. Remember, if you do share the Edified podcast by midnight tonight, we will... Take those names, put them into a hat, and draw to give a gift card. Thank you so much to all of our viewers, all of our supporters. We love you so much. We appreciate your time each and every week. And uh, as always here on the Edified Podcast, we are satisfied if God is glorified and you are edified. Thank you for tuning in this week.